Pass. He's backstage. This is your all-access pass to everything you need to know to design, produce, and inspire your next event. I'm your host, Troy Peters, Seas Productions' very own Chief Experience Officer, here to guide you through, through the world of live event production. Remember to subscribe to the pod- podcast at seaspro.com slash backstage or wherever you get your favorite podcast so you too can be backstage. Today we've got Josh Darase. He's our just an amazing, amazingly talented um, account manager, but you are really like a Swiss Army knife. Like you know a little bit of everything, like the whole process, right? I, I'm very pr- pr- proud of myself for having got my certification, my my CTF, Chief Technology Specialist, Certified Technology Specialist, many years ago because I was really good at video and lighting, but I didn't know audio as well. I started out in lighting, so it really kind of rounded my skills. There's not a lot of us in the business that that are that do that that well, but it gives you a really unique perspective on the whole process from concept all the way through completion, right? Building out that first response to the RFP, you'll sit alongside me or any of our sales team and really kind of make sure that they're capturing everything that they need. And then when we've sold the show, you're kind of going through it again with a very, very, very microscopic view to make sure every little piece is added in there, all the little, you know, $1, $2 things that we don't really charge for, but they got to be there so that you can connect the components together. And then even on the, on site, if, if you're on site or, or you're passing things off to whoever's on site, having them set up for success with all the information and what they're getting, where they're receiving it, where it's going. And then in closure, you're usually again, sitting alongside the team going through, all right, we added these things. Are we make sure we're capturing it properly? Or if something didn't work, what was the reason? We give a report to the warehouse and to QC to make sure it's taken care of. So tell us a little bit about the journey. Let's start from the beginning. I know that was a lot, but start from the beginning. So an RFP comes in, I might hit you up like, okay, Josh, here's our show, right? This is what we got to start putting together. How, it all starts from an email. Right? <laughs> yeah. So okay. what, let's start with that. How's, what's the best way for you to get the information, whether it's coming from one of your sales team or from a client, to put that first step forward into making a successful event? Sure. I mean, it depends on the type of event or the type of client or you know what type of information we're getting whether it's an RFP or just hey let's create something together so whether it's an email or we talk face to face or if I get a text like hey let's just jump on a call and talk about it and I'm taking notes kind of goes all over the place depending on the salesman or the day or the client right but yeah a lot of the time it's through our CRM or through our inventory management system that kind of helps us take notes based upon the client, based upon the event. Um, yeah, I mean, lots of notes. All right. Usually it's an email. I'll, yep. I'll stick with my first line. Usually yeah. a lot of questions too, right? Of, okay, well, yeah. you've you've kind of yeah. started to have the conversation about sure. what you need for your event, right. but these are the things that are missing. What do you what do you see typically that's missing before you can really build out a quote? Um, it depends on the department, but. Um, yeah, a lot of the times it's overlooking how much or too much gear that's needed, whether the cameras are being recorded and how far away the cameras are or what the idea of a room would need for the capacity of the people or the ceiling height of a room is going to change and we can't do that in there, so we need to get creative. Right. So. Like we'll often get like, okay, our event's at the Marriott Marquis, downtown San Diego. These are the dates. Mm-hmm. But there's, I don't know, 25, 30 meeting room spaces right. in that in that hotel. Well, so yeah, and to the to the whether it's an RFP or whether we're creating something together with the client, sometimes they know exactly what they want. Sometimes here's what we had last year and we want to mix it up or we want just this. Just just send us this. And so there's that side. And then there's the, hey, we don't know what we want. Mm-hmm. This is the room. This is new to us, or we're new to San Diego, or we're new to wherever we're going because we go everywhere. Let's build it together. What do you think? And, right. And that's tough too because now we're playing the budget game of hey, we can make some amazing, amazing events or renderings. Our marketing department can throw together stuff, but what's the budget? Right. Because we don't want to spin our it's not spinning our wheels but we don't want to throw a ball that's out there too yeah too, too big that you're not expecting so small medium large all right they could all feed the same room but which one do what we want to go with what are you what are you looking for so yeah getting to 
getting to the budget or getting to what their vision is, um, that's that's definitely what I deal with up front or first roll is, you know, hey, we've got this thing. Here's an email. Like I was saying, first thing is usually an email. What do you think? Let's look at it. I already talked to them. Here is the ground. A couple questions that I spoke on or, you know, this is roughly what they want. They want a couple cameras. They want to record it, but they're not really sure. Right. So, or they're, you know, if, when it comes to bringing in their own gear, we could talk about that later, but that's yeah. another thing. Yeah. So. And then we take that, we kind of, you know, put that together. We, we, we figure out the labor, you know, we obviously know what our, what our show days are, how many days it takes to set that up. We kind of do the math. Essentially it's a, it's a, just a fancy calculation, right? You're trying to figure out how many positions we need to put in there, how many, how, how it gets from the truck into the ballroom, uh, how things move around. Um, so we figure all that out. We send that back over to the client. You know, hopefully they like what they see. They reply back. All right, let's move this forward. What do you do then? What's, are you done? Is that it? All right, here you go. Here's hand it off to the warehouse. Here's our, here's our pick list. Fulfill the show. So then it becomes a conversation with operations. So it's, what are we, you know, what are we short on? What do we need to sub rent? If this is, you know, they were looking for a specific teleprompter that we don't own, et cetera, right? So then it's me working, not always, but at least ball rolling. Um, and they, they can do it all on their own too. But some of the bigger shows, um, we will kind of have a, okay, here's what's going on with this show. We have this buy full drape track and we need to get a couple bids on this and it's in this city. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that kind of stuff, especially if it's out of town, we'll, yep. we'll look at, you know, what is the cost benefit of, bringing our own gear out or partnering with one of our sister companies out there, et cetera. Yeah. And I, I would say, you know, I've, I've been with a couple of different companies over my career. I think you are pretty unique in that you do, you're very um, accountable towards like, okay, we know that, you know, this is kind of what our line item cost should be for this, sure. but they kind of want to do this. So what does that look like? How can we, right. so you're just really good about reaching out beforehand. I know Austin on our team is really good about doing this as well, but you kind of like, we'll, we'll have those early conversations about like, okay, Hey, whoever's in, you know, we just did a show in Austin, Texas. Who, who's in Austin, Texas that we know that might have that piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. What's the price we can get for that? Okay. That's, that's where we need to be. Or, Hey, Troy, well, you need to go back to the client. It's going to be a little bit more than we expected, but you're so open and honest about those things. I think that really just sets everybody up for success. Um, the company, uh, the client, um, the account manager that's, you know, working with you to, to get that show done and, and facilitated and then the project team on site. Yeah. So. Yeah. I try to be the bridge where I can between, you know, what from the creative side of sales to the like down and not down and dirty, but the down and realistic side of logistics and ops and like what it's actually going to take on site. And I don't know everything. I'm just I'm not jack of all trades, but I roughly understand what it takes to do everything. Right. And I can, you know, talk sales and talk ops. So it's the not the perfect role, but it's the perfect seat to sit in to kind mm -hmm. of be the most value for sure. Yeah. So. And you're even a pretty talented individual on site. Um, saw you in action recently uh, on show site with a show. A very big show that had a lot of moving parts. Talk a little bit about how did you how did you approach your day? Like from whether it was the setup day to the show day, how did you how did you tackle that? What what um, tools did you use from your toolbox to make sure we got everything done that day and the client was happy and everybody set up for success? Well, this show this show was not different, but I used to be in the field a lot and couple years ago stopped doing that to be more in the building support and for this show I went out for a multitude of reasons but I had already been so mind clenched into this show that I could tell you just about anything involved in the show so for me there wasn't a whole lot of all right I'm going to do this today and then this needs to happen I already knew you already you had the whole thing you'd you'd been living in, in the spreadsheets sure. in the matrices sure. for <laughs> months sure. really at that right. point which Real quick, it was just because uh, one of these spaces became, I don't want to say it became larger, but it became necessary for us to send a project manager to run the space. Mm -hmm. I was already going out to shake the client's hand anyway, so it made sense for me to just run it. Um, but to answer your question, starting my day, go down there a little early, make sure I get my team. We had some local crew there as well as our own people that we traveled in. 
and yeah, I mean, day one, we got the dump trucks early, which was great, you know, get ahead on sorting cases, making sure that, you know, we had four or five, four floors, five floors, four floors, four floors yeah. a ridiculous amount of square footage. I wish I had one of those little rolly cart things I could drive around on like the, yep. uh, like the guys at the loading dock do. In fact, I asked multiple times and they always just laughed at me, <laughs> but, um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, the support team we had in the building here and on site, just helping to sort cases like Derek Reed did a great job with that. Mm -hmm. um, but there was the GS team, there was my area, which was considerate like an experience um, expo hall. And then just what, 60 breakout rooms, 50 yeah, breakout rooms, roughly. it was a lot. Yep. There was a lot going on. So yeah, all of our project leads did a great job. Um, and that's really a good, oh yeah, a big piece of it is being able to delegate, not being able to, not having to do 100%. everything yourself, but jumping in when it's necessary. Right. Um, again, something that I think you just shine at. You, I think everybody knows you know what you're talking about, and that that just speaks volume. So they trust that you're making the right call. They don't have to put it on themselves. So I think that that that's great. Yeah, really. I'm working with, you know, every crew, every town we go to. There's going to be some crew that doesn't quite get it. There's going to be your heroes. And you kind of figure out who those people that's are. Every crew, every crew, that's everywhere. Every crew. Yep, that's every crew, unless we bring one hundred percent. You know, the in the building people, which yeah. you know, that's never enough to run an event anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's always a collaboration of talent that's in town. Yep. No matter where you go. So. Yeah. Cool. And I loved it because you were. I mean, ultimately, you were in an area that was very. Um, you know, it was right behind registration. It was where the client was all the time. Mm -hmm. So they would see you every morning, and you know I c kept hearing on site like that, that Josh guy oh, okay. is just always there and always getting the job done, and and my response was always like, yeah, that's why I put him there. Like, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean you nailed it, and it was it really is. There's not every project manager or account exec that can really do those that many roles of being able to be technical in the room, but also then turn around and go, hey, how's your day going? And and really kind of keep that positive attitude. What are the Josh things that you do to keep that positive smile on your face, ready to tackle a problem, but then turn around and go, hey, how's everybody doing? You know, I was raised that way, I guess. Like I couldn't remember a time where, you know, I'm not in the morning, you know, psyching myself up, oh, okay, you know, got to, and then, and I'm naturally an extrovert, so I, I gain the proverbial coin by interacting with people like that, so I'm not necessarily drained emotionally at the end of the day, which is a blessing, I suppose, because I know plenty of people are just, I know people that are emotionally drained the whole first thing room. in the morning, Bam. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure, um, you know, my wife's a morning person, and I'm not, so this show that we went to was two hours the other direction. And so getting up at what would have been four in the morning Five was yeah. three. So yeah, that was rough for sure. Like that was a struggle hundred percent. Um, but yeah, all in all do what must be done. Right. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. And do it with a smile. Positive yeah. attitude. No one else is going to lead per se. Right. Right. At least if, you know, if you're responsible for this area, lead by example. Yep. End of story. Yeah. So. So the last piece of this is really, you know, how do you close out a show? What are the, what are the, some, some of the things that you could like, okay, I need from my project managers who are on site, take a show that you're not on site for, sure. but when you're as the sort of like account managing side of it, where you're gathering timesheets, you're gathering reports, you're gathering, you know, actual bills from things we've sub rented or, or airline tickets, making sure that's all captured. Right. How does that? How do we make that easier for you? What are what are the things you need in order to kind of really make that all come together? We're into we're into making things better now, huh? Yes. Okay. Always making things better. <laughs> um, so we have a thing called the TPS report, which Ops is going to love this, which is just the post show report. Yep. But it was always a joke because nobody knew what the T was for. <laughs> the post show report. Yeah. Come on. Um, but that is just whoever the lead is for the show, or like this show, there were five four leads mm -hmm. or whatever. Any project manager is responsible for, for filling out their post-show report and their crew call times and like when people were here, or when they left. Um, so that's all factored in kind of against the, not the quote necessarily, but like the final, um, the final quote, the right. final manifest of what should be on the show. Yep. People and gear. Um, so we go through afterwards and look at that. Usually it's the project manager and our technical director will look at t 
times along with our labor coordinator. I'm not as much involved in that unless there's a problem, let's say. Um, and yeah, I mean, people are responsible for sending in their invoices with their Ubers that we account for on the front end and flights are usually paid for ahead of time. So um, as far as the back end for me, I've stepped recently more into handling that, but it's, it's pretty well managed right now. Um, Everybody gathers their information. Problems. Yeah, I would bring say it the together. only thing is like invoices coming in super late or people upgrading their tickets to first class without the authorization, et cetera. <laughs> what? Like I've not um, seen taking this. Taking Uber Blacks or whatever they call them now, Uber <laughs> Premium, <laughs> yeah. what have you. Um, so that, that's a thing. But uh -huh. uh, yeah, other than that, that, that's kind of all handled on the project <coughs> manager side, which I am blessed to not have that problem on the show that I just did. Right. So. Um, I haven't quite had that experience, but. And I think a lot of that comes down to you've really got to manage the day-to-day -day expectations as things change, right? Every single day there's like, hey, we need an extra microphone in this room. So capturing that information, making sure that we're reporting it into the TPS report so that we can pull that at the end of the, oh yeah, we added another microphone that week and that cost us this much money. We gotta make sure we're passing that on, but having that responsible conversation on site with the client to go like, okay, we're gonna go into overtime today. Or we can start a little bit later tomorrow. This was during one of the load end days. Um, and the client was just like, no, let's get it done. You know, if it's two more hours of overtime, what's that dollar amount? Okay, let's do it. Let's get it done. Peace of mind. So then peace of mind to the next yeah. morning, for sure. So really, then it's easy to forget about that when you're at the end of the show and you're done and it's been a couple of days and you're like, oh, did we have overtime that day? I don't remember. And So for me, my like tips and tricks would be on site, it's what I used to do. Um, and I did this a little on the current show that we're discussing. Didn't have to as much because again, I was blessed to have a pretty decent team on my end and I didn't have to worry about too much. But I would just talk to my phone and take notes that way. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Which, because if I'm sitting here and I'm typing on my phone, taking notes, and now I have crew looking at me going, well, he just got on me for being on my phone instead of Right. Yeah. And this was Perception. the same when I was in the warehouse. It's the same thing was I would try to, you know, set the example by not sitting there on my phone, sitting down. Yep. Right. Whether yeah. I'm building the LED wall or not, I'm standing there. I'm not sitting in front of house. Perception. That is, oh, that goes head. right in line with your, you know, having that positive energy, being aware of your surroundings, being aware of how you might be being viewed and, like and those sorts of, of things to keep people like, He's still working. I got to keep working, right? Sure. Or like, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I like to think of it like the Disney trash can. Have you heard of this? No. So Walt Disney had a thing where you could not go, to, it's either 30 paces or 30 feet, whatever that actually comes out to, without running into a trash can so that they solved the litter problem. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that being a leader on site was like, you can't look around and not see me. Now there's obviously a give and take to this. Sure. If there's a ton of breakout rooms, it's different. But for this Again, this last event, or if it's just one main stage, I used to do a lot of outdoor festivals and such like that. But um, yeah, I, yeah. Am, I am in your visual field, period. Yeah. Because if you need something, or if you feel like taking another break, blah, 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 right? I, I, I'm there to kind of just moderate and, and keep people driving. So I think that's that's leading by example, right? Sure. That's what I think I think the best leaders do. I mean, I'm, I will be the first one in, last one out. You know, at the office, I'm here. I had to get people to let me in the building the other day because I didn't have my code set up yet. Um, but yeah, really, you you want to lead by example, and I think that you epitomize that really well. So good job, man. Appreciate it. All right. Well, let's close out this show because <laughs> it was a big one. But um, I think everything that has been done, everybody, the whole team we had on that show was that was great, absolutely stellar. Clients very happy. We're we're you know hopefully going to be doing that show for many years. But again, um, yeah, thanks for being on the podcast. Anything you want to add? Any last? I was about to say, there's always bumps on shows, yeah. period, right? In fact, if it was easy, we wouldn't pay these supreme ops and technical people to be there to help us troubleshoot and solve problems if it was just, did you turn it on and back off again? Off mm -hmm. and back on again? Yep. Right? But at the end of the day, I've had a few people ask me, so how'd that show go? The client was super happy. Yeah. Period. Yeah. End of story. Perfect. Yeah. I always, one of my favorite, I have a couple of favorite <laughs> sayings that one of them's, you know, it's all just smoke and mirrors, but the other one is, um, you know, if it went perfect, you wouldn't real, you wouldn't, 
you wouldn't see why we're here, right? If if the show just went perfectly, you start to have people like, well, we could just do this. But when you have those little bumps and you have the quick response times that we have and you're on it quickly and you know how to solve the problems, you're like, that is the value. That's what you're paying for, mm-hmm. right? So, And I've been on the client side. I would always want specific people in the room because I knew that they we're paying to them top dollar yeah. because I don't have to worry about it. Even if if I see it starting, the microphone's failing on on the main stage, I don't have to go and figure it out. I know somebody's already on it. And oh, that's you said that earlier. Peace of mind. Peace yeah. of mind. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Josh, Absolutely. for being on the podcast. Again, this is Seas Backstage, your all-access pass to everything you need to know to design, produce, and inspire your next event. Make sure to uh, subscribe to the podcast at seaspro.com slash backstage. My marketing team's laughing at me in the background because I can never remember what to say, and I say it every week. But um, thanks again for tuning in. <laughs>